Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. So we finished the lectures for the material in Chapter 1. Now before starting Chapter 2, I want to talk a bit about the problems at the end of Chapter 1. So in the first problem, I give you five ODEs. I want you to write them as first order vector ODEs. Tell me what the phase space is, what the dependent and independent variables are, whether they're autonomous or non-autonomous, and whether they're linear or non-linear. And if there are any unspecified constants in the problems or parameters, state what they are. Now the first three are very similar to what we did in the lectures and in the in the chapter itself. The last two have a couple of little wrinkles with them, but if you use the same idea as I gave in the chapter, redefine all the derivatives below the highest order as new dependent variables, it should work out in much the same way. Okay, problem two we've already seen. That was the example of the ODE that for a given initial condition, x equals zero in this case, had an infinite number of solutions. But what I want you to look at now is if you look at a different initial condition, does it have a unique solution? And remember, the reason it had an infinite number of solutions it was because it was non-differentiable at the origin. Okay, problem three is interesting we've looked at pieces of it. By that I mean we looked at the linear equation x dot equals ax, in this case a equals 1, minus 1, and we looked at and, and we looked at x dot equal x squared. So x dot equals minus x has an in, has a unique solution for each initial condition that exists for all time. x dot equal x squared has a unique solution for each initial condition that lows up in a finite time depending upon the initial condition. So if you combine these two terms, tell me about the time interval existence for an arbitrary initial condition. Now you could solve for this analytically because the formula I gave you for the solutions, or imp implicitly for the solutions, of first-order autonomous systems, you can do the integrals in this case, provided you don't divide by zero. And the last problem is a linear system. This is the type of system which I believe you solved in your calculus course, and so you may need to look back at Appendix B to revise the technique for solving this. But you get the solution and it's expressed in terms of integrals involving a of t and b of t and the initial conditions. And so what I want you to tell me is what conditions you need to put on a of t and b of t and the initial conditions so that the solution exists for all time. And this is kind of the way you work in applied mathematics. You, you get a solution and you try to figure out what it means or when it means something that uh, is useful for you. Okay, so next lecture we begin chapter two and I will see you then. Goodbye.